So I have with me here the ZTE Nubia Z17 with a Snapdragon 835 processor and Adreno 540 GPU. So in this video, I'm gonna test out the gaming performance, but most importantly, how much battery life will we lose gaming and will it run into any performance issues via thermal throttling, which happened on the OnePlus 5 I reviewed. It got really quite hot to the touch and what happened was it affected the performance and certain games had lag, which I found to be quite disappointing. Hopefully this will not be the case with this particular model. So for some of the gaming, I'm going to be using a game controller and it gives me a good chance to test out this here, which is the GameSir T1S that I recently just picked up. Have a look and see what this latest controller from them is like for gaming. So this here can also work as a wireless controller, but I'm just gonna use it for my reviews here when I do gaming tests. It's just a little easier having hardware controller, of course. So that comes in a nice box there, and the style of it, as you can see, is a little more like, I would say, a PS4 controller than the older previous game, Surf 4S, which is more like an Xbox 360 one. So you got some shoulder controls there, and then the mobile phone just mounts in here and you have to pair this up to your Bluetooth devices. So this first title is Modern Combat 5. And using the controller just makes things a little bit easier than the touch controls. So, so far frame rate seems good. A few little stutters just there. This title here is Dead Trigger 2. Performance of this one seems to be quite fluid, fine. There's still a little bit of slowdown now and then popping in, you can see. I would have thought with a 1080p screen only, and of course the Adreno 540, that this would be silky smooth, but not quite the case. Next up is Real Racing 3. Again, I'm seeing a little bit of slowdown. I don't know whether you can pick that up. I mean, I should probably be recording in 60 frames per second, but even so, I think you can see that now and then there's a little bit of choppiness just back then. So I wouldn't say it's got the best Snapdragon 835 performance I've seen so far. Could be down to my shop ROM that I have on my Nubia Z17. It isn't the official Chinese ROM. This next title is Heroes of Incredible Tales. Otherwise known as Hit. Really good graphics on this one. As you can see, this one is playing perfectly fine, no problems.
This title here is Mortal Kombat X. It's another touched based only game. So no using the joystick on this one, unfortunately. You can see it's running this one fine, perfect as you'd expect. And this last game I'm going to test is Asphalt Extreme, which had a bit of lag on the OnePlus 5, which was the last Snapdragon 835 device I looked at. Seems to be running better than the OnePlus 5 here, which is good. And I will check out the thermals, just how hot it's getting after this little bit of gaming here. So this definitely looks smoother. So after that gaming, let's have a look at how warm the device is getting. So 36.8 degrees on the rear. That's not too bad. It is getting warm to the touch, but I mean, it's not burning or feeling like it's cooking or anything like that. I have to get up to around about 50, 45, 50 degrees for that. And up to 36 on the front, almost 37 there. So not too bad, the thermals. So there we go, great gaming performance from the Nubia Z17. You will see a little bit of slowdown depending on the games, but overall everything is really fluid, it's playable. As for battery life, well we lost around almost 20% in the time I was gaming, which is about normal. The Snapdragon 835 does burn through the battery when gaming a little bit faster than the likes of the Snapdragon 625. As for the GameSir T1S, well it's not a bad controller, I've only been using it now just a game, but I do feel that the GameSir 4S, the previous model that I have, with more of a, you could say, an Xbox One design to it, this is more like a PlayStation 4 copy, the design. I feel this one's got better ergonomics, as a result, of course, more comfortable, and the triggers are larger, you can see. I had a bit of an issue, too, with the trigger on this one, that in Modern Combat 5, pulling down there, I had to press really hard to get that to shoot sometimes. It could have been something to do with the game, but it didn't feel as good. And the brace here, it holds the mobile phone fine, which is, of course, this one is 5.5 inches without any issues there. It will support up to six inches. And overall, out of these two controllers, I think I'm gonna keep with the 4S version there. Thanks a lot for watching this video, and I do hope to catch you back in the channel with more up and coming reviews. Bye for now.